you can preach too. I come up here as a lie. I'm probably not even going to open this iPad. I went old school this morning. Uh, God is moving. Aren't we glad that we can hear from the Lord? Amen. Not just on a, a corporate level. We come here, we hear, but aren't you glad what Pastor just said? It's something that we can experience on a day-to-day -day basis, on a situation-to-situation -situation basis. When you need, you know, I was, well, I'm going to tell y'all, y'all would be in a bind if I could sing real good. Y'all would be in a bind. I was fighting it over here, and the, the song come to me when you was talking about it. And I listened to it this morning. And I can't sing it like she sing it. But she said, well, there's a leak in this old building. And my soul has got to move. Boy, I'll tell you, I would be in a bind if I could sing it here. Uh, we just sing for the rest of the day. I don't know about you, but I realize that this old thing is passing away. And there's just so much things going on out in the world. And my soul's got to be stirred up today. It's time to move on. Ooh. Y'all going to butcher my message. Y'all better stop. I gave Pastor a whole book of, uh, of scriptures to, to make slides, and I'm not going to read all of them. Sister Chrissy, you awake back there? You can please, uh, from now on, if I get up here, you can kill that piano music. As soon as I take the mic, babe, you can kill that music. Hmm. Y'all just have to bear with me. It's all over me, so you just have to hold on. Whew, hallelujah. This morning I was, uh, I was up early and I was praising and worshiping in my, in my living room and that song came on and I was, whew, there was a leak in this old building, you know, and it says this building's leaning, but my soul has got to move. I don't know about y'all, but we, the other day when they said there's two hurricanes coming and it's probably going to bust us in the mouth and most everybody I knew was just, well, okay. <laughs> After the year we done had, it don't even surprise us, it don't bother us, we not even worried about it. But then I told my wife the other day, I looking at it, I, don't, I just don't think so. I'm sorry, I just don't think so. I'm sorry, but you cannot get so used to your situation and what's going on in 2020 where you start believing that all of a sudden bad things are going to happen because they've already happened. I don't know who that's for, but some of y'all need to get out of that. And I'm going to help you today. I'm going to help you, okay? You can put my first scripture up, which is Galatians. Um, it should be at 5 and 22. Now, it's going to be in the King James Version, but I'm going to, y'all read that, but I'm going to read you something else, all right? The New Living Translation says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Verse 24, the, those who belong to Christ Jesus has nailed their passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Verse 25 says, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. 26, let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Give me Joel 2. 28, 29 says, Then after doing all these things, all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. Whoo, Jesus. Y'all help, help. Hold on. Just hold on. All right, we're going to get there. John 3 and 5. Now, Jesus is talking. He says, Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit. Big ass. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Acts 1 and 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Right. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Aren't you glad that even though this old building is leaking... That I got a, a building not made with hands over in glory. We're talking about the Holy Ghost today. You can sit down if you can. If you can't, just get up and run on it. Uh, my, uh, my, my title is the Holy Ghost Effect. The Holy Ghost Effect. I, I actually got this message, uh, man, maybe last year. I don't know. It's been a while. I've been chewing on this thing. I, I was going to teach a class. This is why I got so many scriptures. Uh, and, and my wife told me I had to decide whether I was going to teach or I was just going to let God do the anointing stuff that he normally does and, uh, and, and go ahead and just preach. So I'm, I'm going to do 
a little bit of both, but mostly one. How about that? I can't do exactly what she says. That gives her too much power. I'm going to just read some uh, things real quickly for you, and then we're going we're gonna to go back to it, and you don't have to. to but if you're, if you're taking notes or you're listening online, just, I'm going to say it as slow as I can, as fast as I can. That makes any sense. Luke 2 and 26 says the Holy Ghost uh, reveals things to us. There is revelation through the Spirit. Now, Scripture says, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Uh, in Luke 12 and 12 uh, the Holy Ghost will teach you what to say. It says, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. It's what Jesus told the apostles when he sent them out. Uh, Acts 1 and 8, which is everybody loves this part, but it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Uh, in Acts 13, 4, it says that Jesus, uh, or the Holy Ghost, can send you places, can put you on a mission. It says, Acts 13, Acts 13 and 4 says, So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed under Seleucia, and from thence sailed to Cyprus. Aren't you glad that whenever you have a moment where you don't quite seem where to go, you can have the Holy Ghost guide you and move you on? How many in here have ever wondered, what does God have for me? Now, I'm trying to tell you that what the Holy Ghost can do in your life. Romans 15 and 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, that word abound in the Greek means to exceed a fixed number of measure. Do you understand right now, this is one of the hardest things for people right now, but it's also the most exciting thing for some of us who quite can't see the all of it, but we got a glimpse, especially if you were here this morning and if you here you were here yesterday. I don't know about y'all been excited, but we got a glimpse of what's coming. And it's not two hurricanes. And it's not a bunch of crazy presidential election. It's not poverty. It's not all these other. I know that's what the world's telling us. I know if you watch the news, I'm sorry if you do. I don't. No, I can't do it. I'm sorry. If I wanted to eat a big old bag of nails, I'd just go sit down and eat a big old bag of nails. Because that's what it feels like after you watch the news. And I know you want to be informed, and that's, that's awesome. I want you to be informed, too. Uh, but there's something going on out there right now that you need to start paying more attention to. And, and I read it a minute ago, and I kind of ran through it for a reason. But in the beginning, or back whenever it was just Joel, it was just a prophecy, Brother Don. It was just something that he spoke out to the children of Israel. But it didn't happen right then. Because it wasn't a then word, it's a now word. Do you understand what I just said? God gave a word a long time ago for right now in this place and in this town. He spoke something and he put it in the bank and it said save for 2020. He saved it for us. Well, I don't know about y'all, I'm excited about it. In Hebrews 2 and 4, he gives spiritual gifts. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, you're going to find out what those spiritual gifts are. Hebrews 2 and 4 says, And God confirmed the message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose. It came by through the highway. It came by by way of. That's what that means, by way of the Holy Spirit. Do you need a miracle? Do you need signs? Do you need wonders? In this day and age, we need more than ever the supernatural to be flowing and moving in our lives. Now, I'm going to walk away from it. I, I got to get away from it. I, I'll end up reading all of it, and I can't, I can't. I'll skip through, and we'll just have to have altar service. How about that? The Holy Ghost effect. The, one of the biggest things that we, we bypass today is the supernatural because I read to you that, uh, that you were being conformed. It wants you to be conformed. In other words, the Holy Spirit is here to guide you. Unfortunately, though, if something else is guiding me, then I am at enmity. In other words, I am an enemy against that Spirit, that Holy Spirit that wants to do the things in our lives. It's why a lot of places, and I'm not here to down nobody, but it's why a lot of places refuse to believe that the Holy Ghost is still poured out in this day and age. Because it costs you a little bit of something. Now, I didn't read the most important ones, I guess. I, the one I, I can't remember them by heart, but I was going to read Acts 2.38, but most of y'all know that, but I, I'll get to you in a minute. But Acts 1, Jesus tells them, and I read it. 
that you go ahead, you go on about, you John baptize y'all in water. In other words, he taught you to repent. It's another thing that we're missing these days. Some of us don't want to say we're sorry because we feel like being right is more important than being clean. Now, you can write that down. That's in Facebook, like you said earlier. Some of us are more important about being right, feeling justified in what we do and what we say and whether or not people agree with us instead of us wanting to be clean and holy before God. Now, I tried to look it up this morning, and I can't find a definite answer, but I will find you one because I love history. But at any given time, they say that it was 1.2 million sacrifices when the Israelites would sacrifice. Some historians say that it was up to their knees the priests in blood. Do you understand what it cost them? Money-wise, it wasn't as much as, as, as we would like to say it does, but what it cost them, the process, what it cost them. Do you understand that the priests had to bear all that? The priests left bloody that day so that you could just roll it back another year. And history tells us that, that they, they had special this and special that. And, and Aaron had to wear this coin on his forehead that whenever he went into the holies of holies, it was so that he could have your iniquity, our sin on his mind, so that when he went in there, it would work. He set it up for it to work. And he went in there and he sprinkled that blood once a year on the holy seat and the mercy seat. And he did all that. And I was make sure that he didn't die. And then he, he put those bells on and they had the bells. And, it, and, and he went in there and it jingled while he went in and it jingled while he went out. And they say that the bells were so he would not die. And I'm talking about what the Holy Ghost does for you today. The Holy Ghost is your teacher. The Bible said that, it, that he said he was sending back the comforter. How many of us need comfort? How many of us have watched this news and we, we sit in our homes and we think about the most evil things that are happening out there? And some of us are in it. I understand that. Some of us have disease. We have sickness. We have issues that we're constantly fighting and we're looking around and we don't have any comfort or any peace. But I just read to you that the effect of the Holy Ghost is peace, love, and joy. Now, that seems contrary, and it also seems negative. David just said that I didn't have no joy, so I didn't have the Holy Ghost. Well, what's, what does the Word of God say? What does the Word of God say about who you are? And then God gave me something this morning because that sounded a little bit negative, and I was like, you know what, God, I can't tell people that, you know, if you ain't got no joy, no love, whatever, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. He said, David, you know what, a lot of times that they get the Holy Ghost and they have it, but they allow a bud, a small seed, to root up within it. It says their vine is supposed to be grafted into him, but you allow negativity, you allow this world to be grafted into that vine, and what happens, just like another weed, it grows up and tries to choke off the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, and peace. Long suffering. Some of us can't even suffer for a day. If you get sick for a day, you'll drag your job up. You'll go home. You won't come back to church. If you got to pay your bill three days late and pay that late fee, you won't give your tithes and offer the next time it comes around. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. It's, you know, unfortunately, we don't want to give in to what it really is for. We want the signs and miracles and wonders. That's how you get it. I, I, just, I just explained it. That's how you get it. But unfortunately, it costs you something. It costs you something. And it's, what they call that, where you say something and then you say something opposite? I don't know. It costs you something. It costs you something, but it don't. It's free. It's free. It's free. Unfortunately, too many times, and, and, and we're, he was right. I didn't even go into it because he, he kind of talked about it. But we're in this, this uh uh, this sermon series about favor. And this is where I got this from. The Holy Ghost is the best thing that you can have in this day and age. It's the best thing that you can have. It's the only weapon that, that's going to bring you hope and peace. What else is going to do it? Oh, well, Jesus is going to do it. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said Jesus was going to do it. Because Jesus said that he was going to spend, send back the comforter in his name. Right. Well, I, I, I kind of did it again. I just explained that Jesus is the spirit. And I can explain to you that Jesus is the father if you want. But since the spirit is Jesus, then do we really have Jesus if we don't have the Holy Ghost? Right. Do we? I say we do, but we don't fully understand nor are we walking in the favor that God has already placed in our heart and our mind. He's wanting to have everything you need. Hmm. 
You have to forgive me. I, I drink a lot of water. Uh, God has prepared you for this time. And the best part about it is, is that if, if you have the Holy Ghost, God told me this earlier, that this, this is a reminder. Uh, the Bible said you have to stir up the gift. Some of us for too long have claimed to be Jesus' name, uh, Pentecostals, one is whatever you want to call yourself, Catholic, can be Jesus' name, whatever you want to be, as long as you're Jesus' name. Uh, and you say that you have the Holy Ghost, but then there's time where tomorrow we wake up for the morning and I'll get up and I'll be like, I can't believe i got to go to this raggedy job one more time. And I can't believe I got this and I got that and I got this. And all of a sudden my joy starts to be choked out by this world, but I'm telling you right now, it's time for you to stir up the gift. I'm going to have to go back to singing. Because, but, <laughs> you know, the, the, this old building, the, the Bible talks about that, that uh, I think it was Paul that wrote it, whatever, that, that he, he talked about how he, we should yearn for, for a heavenly body. He talked about that, and he explains himself when he writes it. He says, I'm not trying to talk. I don't want to die. He said, but there's something out there. And he said it was the earnest. It was the spirit that he put on the inside of us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Of glory. So, do, do you want to go there? Do you want to stay here? Nobody. Nobody. And that old song says that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go right now. Well, the world's turning up enough dust that most of us kind of want to go right now. Some, it's supposed to turn up the heat. It's designed that way. We're not teaching on Revelations today, but if you read Revelations and you realize if you think that we're in the end times right now, then kudos to you. I believe it too. But if, if, if you think that for one moment that this isn't designed the way it is, if you think that for one moment that whoever becomes president is exactly who God chose to be president, then you don't know what you're reading in the Bible. Because I'm telling you right now, that God is trying to stir up the gift on the inside of you. He's trying to show you what's next. And if a godless heathen gets into the White House, that means he's trying to tell you that, baby, he wants you coming home. He's calling. He turned the street light on. He's trying to tell you that there's something that's coming and that you need God more than you ever needed him before. And I'm, I'm not one of those. I'm not going to uh, scare you into the altar because the effect that comes with the Holy Ghost or to make you understand two things. One, I need him more than ever in this day. In this time, I need him more than ever in this day and time. When Christians are being uh, hurt and thrown to the side, when they're being charged in other countries, and you think that's not going to happen here, but I promise you that if you blink an eye, you'll turn your back on someone, and they will evil do you right over. They will throw you to the side. You'll be stabbed in the back and all that. But you know what the Holy Ghost said? And I read it earlier. He said that he was going to bring back things to your remembrance and, and that he would guide you in the way to go. I'm trying to tell you right now, God is trying to move you on the board of life and put you in the right place at the right time. Everything happens for a reason. A lot of times we use that as an excuse on why we can't explain what's going on. I'll explain it for you. This old building's got a leak in it, and my soul has got to move. It's got to move. Some of you are wondering what it is that you need in your life. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost in you, Christ in you, but you don't have no hope if Christ ain't in you. Not of glory. You can hope in this old world. You can hope in a, 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 a stimulus check. And you can hope in your Social Security. And you can hope in your, your daughter or your son. Or you can hope in your family. You can hope in all these things. But too many of us have already been bitten too many times by the things. If you're hoping in the government, it's going to let you down. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. If you got hope in your government, it's going to let you down. It's been letting people down for years. That's why they had the Revolutionary War and everything else. That's why they had the Civil War. The government's always going to let you down because people are people. But the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the one thing, I mentioned it earlier. It says that if Christ is in you and you have the Holy Ghost in you, then what's going to happen is, he made an example. He said, if the same Spirit that was in Jesus is in you. That means that whenever it's time to move on, when it's time for that soul to move on, that no matter what they do to you in this lifetime, it doesn't matter if they bury you in a pine box or they bury you in a mausoleum, that one day the hope of glory is going to lift you up and you're going to move on to glory. I don't know, you. aren't you sick of hurting? Aren't you sick of being sick and tired? How are we going to do it? 
The Holy Ghost is going to do it. What I love about it, when they had strife and they had problems in the church, they were worried about widows and Greeks. It was Gentiles versus Jews. It was old school people who've been in church all their life versus the new people who just got there. They still had the scent of pagan uh, incense on them. They still had all this other stuff. And they were worried about who was being served more. Was it the Greek-speaking Jews or the, the Roman or the, uh, the real Jews, as they call themselves? There's always division in the church. There's always division trying to creep into the body. And they sit there and they start to pray about it. They start to talk about it. And one of the best scriptures in the world, it said they, it seemed good. When they pick people, devout men, to take care of the issue, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and us. And I'm sorry, but if you can't get us involved with what the Holy Ghost is doing, then you're always going to have division in your life. If you can't get on board with the Holy Ghost is trying to do with you and in this church, oh, Lord Jesus, he's speaking right now. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you got to understand two things. It's for you. It's for you. And it's easy. Mm. It's easy. It's easy. Too many times we'll quit on everything. Some of us have got, and I didn't even think that was a thing, but we have the spirit of quit on us. Spirit of quit. And we find it a lot. If you work in the chemical plants, it, it'll come on you quicker than a heartbeat. They call it that drag up bug. They used to draw it on the beams. They'd draw it on the ground. They'd, they'd, they'd put it everywhere. And then you could tell that the job was in consensus was not good. Everybody thought, if you went to the port again to use the restroom, it'd be on the door. It'd be on this. It'd be on that. It would be everywhere. You'd see it, along with the rain turtles, so we could rain out. They'd draw them on the ground, too. But, but, but I know men, and I have friends of mine who are, who are good at what they do, but they can't get a job. Because the spirit of quit and the spirit of drag up has gotten on them so much that any little old thing that will happen, they'll load their box up and they'll leave. Well, I don't like the way you're talking to me or I don't like the fact that I got to do this or I got to walk this far. Uh, I've, I've had guys that drag up on a job because they had to walk a little far from the gate to the lunch tent. And because of the spirit of quit. They get to where now they can't be used and they can't be bought in. And even if I turn their names in, I can't even get them hired on because that spirit of quit. And some of you have letting the spirit of quit get on you so much that right now the Holy Ghost is banging on your door. I don't know yet. You've got prophetic word. You've got prophetic word that oozes and eases out of this place. If you don't trust me, you don't believe me, go to another church for about two weeks. Listen to me. Go to another church for about two weeks. Do it. I dare you. I'll take your slack up. If you, if, you, if you work in this church, I'll do your job. If you don't believe me right now, go somewhere else and not realize that God is moving in and out of this place and, and online. And he talked about it earlier, that the Holy Ghost is moving. It's because we don't have the spirit of quit in this place. And if you brought it in here, it's not welcome here. But it don't got to go home with you. You can leave with another spirit. Another spirit on the side. That's what I love about the Bible when it talks about when them uh, apostles got a little bit too much in them. A little bit too much in them. They went out there and they found this man and he was casting out demons in Jesus' name. But he didn't run with them. He wasn't like us. And this is, I'm going to tell you right now, I feel coming against the spirit of religion right now. Listen to me. If you feel like that a name on your sign or something that you grew up on separates you from other people that call themselves Christian, you've missed it. You've missed it. But the problem is, is too many of us want to call down fire from heaven on other churches. I'm praying right now that the Holy Ghost falls across the street at Emmanuel. And I hope it falls down the road at the Catholic Church. Because they need the comforter. They need signs, miracles, and wonders because he said that he would pour it out in the last days. And I come against that spirit of religion where you feel like because you got a card in your pocket that somehow you elevate it. The anointing never had a card. The anointing been around since the beginning of time. Never had a card. You know who didn't have a card? John the Baptist. He didn't have no card. You know what he was doing? He was just proclaiming the way of the Lord. Some of us want to shut him up. We're sick and tired of John the Baptist screaming and hollering in your life. If you've got a man or a woman of God in your life that's telling you that the Holy Ghost and the thing you need is down there at the altar, if they're telling you, you need to go ahead and say, you know what, I need to listen to that. 
I need to live. Because without John the Baptist, you don't get baptized with repentance. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost in us. I, 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 love, I love the Holy Ghost because not only does it give me freedom, because it's what freed me. And I got my revelation this morning. <laughs> and I'm going to be as, 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 as couth and as nice as I can be. But I read that, that scripture about them bells on him. And I started reading what some Jewish historians said that it was for. And, and they said it was to honor like the, the Lord, but just like Esther did whenever she went into the court. It was, it was against the law. It was against kingly, kingdom protocol. That's what they called it. To, to not be announced. And that's why he had the bells on. But I got a different revelation. It come from God. And just like Jeff Arnold always says, I didn't get this from no book and I ain't steal it from nobody's tape. I got this this morning in prayer. Can you imagine? You know I've sinned. And here you are. You're in this old dispensation. And you know you sinned. And you brought your lamb. And you've, you've brought whatever it is. And you're poor maybe. You brought your dove. And they cut it. And they bled it all over. And they got it. And then the high priest has to go in to there. And it's because if you don't hear the bells, that means he's died. That means that your sacrifice has not been received. That means that, that, that it didn't work. That salvation and your sins aren't rolled back. Can you imagine being far off? Because you're not even welcome, nor can you even get close to the holies of holies. You can't even get on the other side of that curtain. There's a line for you. It stops at the altar. You can't get past. And all of a sudden, you realize that you've had a rough year, and you, you've done everything you could to obey the laws, and you, and you, and you didn't want to covet your, your, your brother's things, but you know what? You sat in, in your tent, and you looked across, and he was having children, and his tent was exploding, and it was, it was getting added on to, and he had more sheep than you had, and you were from the same tribe, and you realized you went to the same church, and you went to the same stuff, and you listened to the same stuff that he did, and somehow he's going, but then you turn around, and you couldn't do nothing, but you coveted, and you, and, you, and you wanted what he had, and you let it eat up your heart. You let jealousy come in. And I read the scripture that if you got the Holy Ghost, you can't be jealous and you can't gossip and you can't come against your brother. That's what the word says. Oh, it's too many times we take people's opinion and we put it up there next to the word of God. I'm sorry, but your opinion don't match the word of God. It don't come close to the word of God. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry if your opinion is important to you. And, I, and if your opinion on something... If I need to know about air conditions and I need to know about whatever it is that everybody else does in this room, I'll ask you. If I want to start a daycare, I'll ask my mother-in-law. I'll take her opinion. But when it came to the Word of God, I don't, I don't need someone's opinion and look at the Word of God and somehow it's a match. It's, you don't even look at it. The Word of God says it, then it, it is what it is forever. Amen. Done. The Word of God said that, that they waited. And they sold the bales in for this purpose. And I believe that God told me this morning, the reason why you had to hear those bells, it says they could hear them. I, I, I didn't read it. Did I? <laughs> I didn't read it. I, I'll read it for you. I, I, don't, I don't want you to I want you to think I made it up. It's not my opinion. And uh, Exodus 28 and 34 through 35 says, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe around about it. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord. And when he cometh out, that he did not die. And I'm trying to tell you something right now. They, 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 they told us that it was supposed to be the sound that God was supposed to hear. But that's not it. God ordained all that other stuff. It was for the people. It was for the people. They stood off to wait to see if they were accepted to whether their sacrifice was it. And if they didn't hear those bells, they knew that something was wrong in the house of the Lord. And here he is behind the veil. And why is that so important? When Jesus dies, it says it was loud, it was black, and it was thunderous, and there was noise, and earthquakes, and motion, and everything. But then the veil rent. Whew. All the way in half. And why did the veil rent? No longer 
would you have to wait to hear the bell sound of the high priest? No longer now would you have to be stuck behind the altar. Because now that Jesus has died and he's going to rise again, and he says that the promise, the, the holy word that come from Joel back in the day where he said he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, has now the wheels have started turning, Brother Don. And all of a sudden now we're in a new dispensation. And some of you need your veil rent today. Some of you have put up a curtain and say, this is as far as I can go in God, and I'll never be able to be holy. I'll never be able to have that there Holy Ghost. I'll never be able to have that because sin separates you. And it does. But that's why John the Baptist came first. That's why he came first. Everything in the Bible is types and shadows. you got to read it for yourself. And I gave you a bunch of scriptures, and if you want after service, I will give you all of what I have. That veil is rent. John the Baptist has come because we need to repent. Because the sacrifice wasn't doing it. Too many people were going up there with their little lamb that they paid their money for. And they let them cut the blood and they walked back out. And they went to living with another man's wife. And they went to coveting somebody else's stuff. And they went to drinking too much wine, alcohol, drugs, whatever you want to call it. Too many people come down here and they just think that if they pay their tithe or I show up, I get my name checked off on faith teams. All of a sudden now I'm a member of a church and that's okay. And I want you here. I need you here. I need, you, I need every one of you to be on my outreach team. I need every one of you to reach this world. I can't do it by myself. I can't do it with just the staff. I, I can't do it. I understand that. I'm not, I'm not a Harlem Globetrotter. This is not how that works. But I need you to have power. God wants you to have power. The first thing that he told you was that he was going to send the Holy Ghost. He told it. And this is the best part. I'm going to read it, or I'll quote it. The best part was he told me they were going to receive power after the Holy Ghost come. So they go down there, and they're in the upper room, and they're in unity. And there, there's so many scriptures and so many words I can give you out of that, but I'm just going to go as fast as I can. But they're in unity. They're in one mind and one accord. Just like we're in here right now. Y'all are looking at me. Y'all doing the same thing. You're looking at me. So you're in one mind and one accord. Hopefully you're being hearers of the word, and then you're going to be doers here in a minute. But right now we're all in one mind and one accord. And then a sound from heaven comes a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole place. All right. The, the tongues of fire that set on them. And they spoke with other tongues as a spirit. All right. And it came forth. All right. It came forth through the spirit, by the spirit, by the spirit. Here we are. Though the spirit on the inside brings forth the tongues on the outside. All right. Now, I know that people teach that that's the evidence. But I, I beg to differ. I think it's a sign for you and everybody else around you. That you got it, but the evidence is in fruit that I read about earlier. Love, joy, peace, all long suffering, all that thing. That the Holy Ghost, when it comes to you speaking tongues, it's giving you the seed. Now you are birth. The Bible said that you are in Christ, you are a new creature. You don't have to walk out sick, you don't have to walk out lame, you don't have to walk out tormented or hurt, or whatever it is that you are right now, you can walk out a new creature. My father-in-law's testimony talks about that when he finally gave it over to God, that God changed his fear, physical appearance. He changed his physical appearance. And I'm not going to tell his testimony. He could tell it for you. But he used to look one way. That's what that meant. And when he walked in there, and whenever he gave his life over, and he spoke in other tongues, and the Holy Ghost filled him, it literally changed the outside of his body. Now, most of y'all looking at me like, oh, Lord, I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. But here we are. We're in a moment where the, the Holy Ghost is moving and pulling on you right now. That's the way it works. He wants to be on the inside of you more than anything else because you are powerless when you're out there in the world. Too many times you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't breathe. I'm talking to somebody right now. You're having chest pains in the nighttime. You call them night terrors. You call them whatever it is you, what you want. Call it give, it, give it a name or give it an excuse. But you're having chest pains in the middle of the night. And you're not wondering. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But all you know is that you're just going to be there until you're not. And the Holy Ghost doesn't want you to live that way. Because he said that he was going to give you power. Power for what? Power to make it for another day. Power to overcome. Power to walk through this life and not be scarred up too bad. Power to go ahead and reach out and believe in faith that God's going to do the things that he said he was going to do. And here we are. Love and life. Holy Ghost field. The fruit's hanging off your tree. 
if you're in this place and you already have the Holy Ghost and you feel like this world is starting to slap you around a little bit, I can tell you right now that if you are not constantly stirring up your gift, you're going to be burnt gumbo on the bottom of the pot. You'll lose something in life. Trust me, I've been there. When you stop stirring up the gift, all of a sudden you realize you think that church isn't, it's not enough. I, I don't have to go. I went last Sunday. I'm talking to somebody either online or in here that, that, that the Lord wants you to understand that attendance ain't everything, but it's something. But it's something. Too many times you allow life's little issues to gum up the works, but you're not stirring up the gift. If you don't stir up that pot, it gets stuck on the bottom. You burn. You lose what God has given you and what the favor is already in your life. Nobody wants to talk about that. I wish that I could tell you that everything's going to be hunky-dory. But it's not. That's not how it's designed. The Holy Ghost is to give you power, to make you an overcomer. How do you have a word of testimony? Because the Holy Ghost gave you the power to make it through another day. He lifted you up when you couldn't lift up yourself. That's what it does. That's who he is. So the supernatural, it's here. That's how it works. We're here for a reason. We're here for a reason. You're ordained to be here today to hear me preach. Unfortunately for you, Brother Don preached at 9. It was awesome. Go back and watch it. But God ordains you to be here to hear this word. Some of you are not using or not showing forth the fruit of the Spirit, and you're wondering whether or not you ever really got it. I'm trying to tell you today, now is your time to make sure you don't leave here until you know you got it. That's what we're missing out. I heard, heard, maybe it was Eddie Edwards that said that. What we miss a lot of times out is too many times you'll come down here and you'll put your hands up like this or you'll sit in your seat and you'll be like, well, God, if you want it to happen, just go ahead and do it. I'm sorry, baby. But if you really understood what the Holy Ghost was willing to do for you in your life, maybe you'd get up out of your seat and come down here and not leave. I live right across the road. I can eat any time. I will pray with you until you get it. But too many times we don't have that. Too many times most of y'all are thinking about what you're going to do after this. Oh, I guess we're going to go to La Rumbo. I guess we're going to go home and eat that roast. Or I guess I'll just come back. I'll give God another chance at 7 o'clock. You may not have that chance. That's the sad thing about this world. You're worried about hurricanes and coronavirus and all these other things. You might walk out of here and a satellite might fall and hit you out of the sky. Stranger things have happened. Great men of God have passed away. I'm, 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 I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. Great men of God have passed away here recently, and we've spoken about mantles and spiritual giftings and all these other things. And, and the Bible says that they, he gives them to whoever he wants. And the Bible says that you have to stir up the gift and then go after what it is that you want. If you're living powerless, below your means, put it that way. Is the Holy Ghost a lottery ticket? No, it is not. But you will live an abundant life in the middle of the poorest situations. I'm going to tell you right now that you can't be no happier. You can't be no happier whenever you wake up in the morning and you know that you have Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know what? What I love to be about people like Jimmy J and people that, that were getting down on their luck and their bodies had gotten so weak and all that, but they had that hope. In glory. In other words, that even if this life, even if God allows things to get as bad as it can get, I know that when it's over, it ain't over, baby. I know that one day I'm going to rise up and that this old building won't be here anymore, but I'll have a new building over in glory. Maybe we don't, I know we don't preach about hell enough, but maybe we don't preach about heaven enough. You know it's better than here? It's, it's better than here. You read about, if you're in all walls of Jasper and you're reading all that gold and you're in all that stuff, that's great. If you want pearls and all that stuff, but I'm going to be with the King of Kings and the God of glory. And I'm going to be in his presence and there'll be no more crying. There'll be no more, no more sorrow. There'll be no more sickness, sister. There's no more cancer. That's why we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know there's no cancer in the kingdom? You realize there's no diabetes in the kingdom? There's no sickness in the kingdom? And he said, thy kingdom come. How is it going to come, Brother Don? Because Jesus went around and preached the gospel of the kingdom. And what's the gospel of the kingdom? What did he do? Well, he healed everybody they came in contact with. He, re he re remitted every sin that he could. 
Everyone that came and needed to be transformed, the man that was full of the devil, when he came running up to him naked, he left in his right mind. I'm trying to tell you, if you feel like that your mind is slipping away from you, the Holy Ghost is trying to restore you today. Jesus Christ on the inside of you, the hope of glory. The hope of glory. Who wants to go to heaven? Huh? I felt like, I felt like Tom Cruise in that movie. Who's coming with me? Huh? Who's coming with me? I'm, I'm sorry, but, but, but uh, are, are we there yet? Is it time? Is it time for us to go? Maybe, maybe not. We haven't seen the great outpouring. We haven't seen all these other things. We haven't seen a lot of things. They're not sacrificing animals. And if you're in the end time prophecy, they're not doing a lot of things. But I tell you what they are doing. There's thousands of people receiving the Holy Ghost in China. And they're in Iran and all these other places. And God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. It's time that Vinton, Louisiana, it's time that, go ahead and put your finger on your chest, it's time that I get what God has for me. It's time that I allow the Holy Ghost to be on the inside and not just moving on the outside. Boy, too many times we talk about Jesus on the inside, working on the outside, but we don't want that outside work. We don't want that outside work. We want that out Jesus on the outside, me working on the inside. We change the song up. Well, we don't want to talk about it, but that's just the truth. Some of you come in here today thinking that you can make it another week without giving it all to God. That right there is a lottery ticket you ain't never going to win. You are gambling with something that is far too precious. Do you understand that not everybody's going to make it? Why is that? Because God doesn't want them? No, God wanted everybody. He wanted everyone. Unfortunately, he gave us our choices. And some of you are going to walk out of this service, and you're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to go ahead and come back tonight? Am I going to go ahead and come back Wednesday night? Am I going to go ahead and just say a little prayer Monday morning? Am I going to go ahead and give God just a little bit more? Some of y'all got so much to give, but you're only trying to chinks him out. Y'all do chinksing around here where I'm from, they got chinksing. All I need is just, I give you just enough. Just enough. You ask for a dollar, I'll get you 10 cents. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. The reason why we have so much sickness in our lives the reason why there's so many things that are trying to choke off the fruit of the Spirit in your life is because you're watering the wrong stuff. You're allowing God to be second and third and fourth and down the list. You allow your pain, you allow your frustration to become God in your life, and you pet that. You've gotten so used to being under the, uh, the, the uh, statue of Dagon, you've allowed it. I'm trying to tell you right now, just like Dagon, whenever they brought the Spirit of the Lord on the Ark of the Covenant and it came into that temple area, you need to be fall that thing flat on its face. Some of y'all need to go ahead and realize that the Holy Spirit is trying to tear down the idols that you have in your life. Where, where, where is that money at? You can't take it with you. Where, where, where is that, that comfort and all that other thing you think you need? Where is it? Where is it going to get you? You realize that God is shaking. He is having a move in this area. We are far blessed in other areas. I know y'all don't think that, but even Vinton, Louisiana is far blessed in a lot of places in the United States. We, we live in, in, in a great area. If you, if you don't believe that, I promise you, just take a trip. Get on social media. Look at other places. You think you're struggling right here? There's a food bank that feeds 4,000 people, hands out 4,000 bags of grocery, if not more, any given month. 4,000. You realize that there's other places in the United States that don't have that. And some of them are living off the government, and they can't get out of it. I'm trying to tell you right now that Holy Ghost revival is trying to move in here. He's trying to supply each and every need. He's trying to supply each and every. Well, where does it come from? Where does your healing come from? Where does it come from? The scripture says, by the power that worketh in us. What's in you? What power? Did we read the scripture already? How are you going to have the things that you need and the things that you truly desire? If I ask everybody here what it is that you need and desire right now, most of you would lie because you're ashamed to say what you really need because you don't want people to know how bad it is in your life. Not truly. Not truly. Right. What do I need? Oh, I need about $100,000. You know, that would do me good. What you really need is a personal relationship with God so you don't wake up every day depressed. And the only thing that's stopping you from trying to kill yourself is because other people are dependent on you. That's, and that's, I don't care. Who you are, but other people depending on you ain't going to get you to heaven. And the reason why you don't kill yourself is because the Holy Ghost is trying to pull on you. And he's trying to let you know that if you just give it up. 
allow him to be on the inside that something good is about to happen. Something great is about to happen. You know, I've never, uh, I, when I was younger, I thought that, I didn't thought, I had dreams. God would give me visions when I was younger. That's how I thought that I was going to be used to God. And I imagined and I seen myself preaching Holy Ghost rallies. But never, ever, ever thought that I would preach about the Holy Ghost like this. You understand that you're hurting. God understands that you're hurting. This is why this is here. He understands that you can't do it on your own. Do you understand that you cannot feed your family on just the food bank alone? Do you understand that God wants to feed your soul? Some of you in here are so dependent on outside help. And Jesus is wanting to be the inside help. So that you can give outside help to somebody else. I, I, don't, I don't know. You know with that, whenever we do that scripture that God wants you to be the lender and not the borrower. Some of us are so wrapped up in being borrowers that we ever can't even see ourselves as a lender. And, 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 and you give somebody 20 bucks, you feel like that scripture has been uh, fulfilled in your life. Well, you know, Lord, I didn't have that 20, but I went ahead and gave it up and... And bless God, somebody gave me $10 of it back. And I guess that scripture's good, that I'm not the borrower anymore, that I lended it out. That's not what that is. That, that is an identity change. Jesus Christ in you, new creature. If you be in Christ, you are a new creature. Some of you need to go ahead and change your identity today. I know you think you know who you are, and then you, you're good with who you are. And if you're good with who you are, maybe this message isn't for you. But if you have the Holy Ghost already in you and you're good who you are, you missed it. Because we're supposed to be stirring up the gift. I need God to change me daily. I need to move forward daily. I can't preach it like this unless I got it like this. You don't know my struggle. You don't know my struggle. I don't tell y'all. I'm a private person when it comes down to my business. You don't know my struggle. And from that moment on, from that statement right there, you're looking for me to vomit some negativity out. But the problem is, is you don't know my God. You don't know my God. If you don't know what it is to struggle, but then wake up tomorrow with the peace to know that my, killed, my children are going to be fed tomorrow, that they're going to have beds to sleep in, and that they're all healthy. You understand that my God it will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Where do I get that peace? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. If you're in need of peace, if you're in need of a healing, if you're in need of anything, you're in need of the Holy Ghost. I read to you that Jesus has said it, and I, I didn't focus on it, but Jesus said that you will not even see the kingdom unless you are baptized by water and spirit. If Jesus is in you, the hope of glory, and without having to be so blunt to say it, but are you wanting to see the kingdom? That song, I love that song about this old building that's leaking and, and, and my soul has got to move. But where is it going to move to? Come on. That same spirit. The effect of the Holy Ghost is salvation. The effect of the Holy Ghost is faithfulness and gentleness, passion and desire, self-control. Some of you have so much problem that you can't even come to the house of God. You have no self-control over the things in your life. You will make excuses for every little old thing. We used to make fun of people who would say, oh, well, my show's on, I'm going to miss. And that seems, you know, whatever. We make fun of that kind of stuff. But everything is an excuse if you're not in the house of God. Everything's an excuse if you're not giving of your time. Everything's an excuse if you're not stirring up the gift. Everything is an excuse if you're not doing what the Word of God says. Are you wanting favor? In a time where we need favor more than ever, do you want favor in your life? Go ahead and stand. If you would stand, you don't have to. So John truly baptized with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. 
too many times that we feel it on us, but we don't feel it in us. Now, I planted a seed today for somebody. You know what the Holy Ghost is going to do for you whenever you get into a wilderness? The Bible says that Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Ghost. That's where he was tempted. That's what we miss. You think when you get the Holy Ghost that it's the devil that led you into the wilderness. It's not. The Holy Ghost is leading some of you through a wilderness right now. And then you need to stir up the gift and quote the word and understand that Jesus is bringing you out of it. And at the end of that time, the Bible says that angels came and ministered. There's a peace coming for somebody in here that's been going through enough wilderness. You've been traveling along. You've had the Holy Ghost, and you feel like that it just ain't working in your favor. But right now, if you would just come down front and give God what he's asking you to give, that there's angels on the other side of it that are about to minister to you, that are about to lift you up. Go ahead and start the music, Christy. You want your new name written down in glory? You want something to happen in your life? It's the Holy Ghost. You need the favor to move forward today. These altars are open. I'll get past my blame until he called my name.